Hello and welcome to today's love cake recipe workshop. Um, just while we're waiting for a few people to arrive, I am going to introduce myself. My name is Isabel, I work at the Shire of Gardner and I am the programs officer there. Uh, part of my job entails uh, organising workshops, programs, activities for our community. And here I am today uh, because I am also a ad cook and I am here to share with you some mud cakes and also my love for cooking. Um, so today we are going to be making not one, not two, but three mud cakes. Um, it sounds like I'm saying mud cakes, but I'm actually saying mug cakes. Um, you don't have to make all the mug cakes. You can make one, you can make two, or if you want, you can make all three. So while we're waiting for a few more people to jump on and arrive, I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown on some things that you might need. So of course you're going to need some mugs. You are also going to need a mixing spoon, any tablespoon, teaspoon will be fine. You are going to need a measurer, a teaspoon and tablespoon measurer. But if you don't have one of those, that's fine. You can use a regular trusty tablespoon and teaspoon. You will also need, of course, a microwave. So here at the I Heart Darden Up group, um, we are doing all our workshops online, if you didn't know, um, and we are bringing them to you live, but we're also going to try doing something different next week and doing some um, watch parties as well as our lives. So keep an eye out for that. Um, why I have you here also, I would just like to um, hear if anyone has received their I Heart Darden Up uh, postcard in the mail. Um, if you have received your postcard, give us a little heart in the comment section. Um, if you could submit your answers that are on the back um, to us at the Shire Gardener, that would be fantastic. It helps us to ensure that we're supporting our community the best that we can during this really difficult time um, and that no stone will be left unturned. If you need any more details, you can always pop a comment in the um, comment section below and we will definitely get back to you with some more information. Alrighty, let's get cooking some mug cakes. So we are going to start with our chocolate mug cake. I don't know about you, but I didn't eat much chocolate over the Easter period. So, you know, I'm looking for something yummy and chocolatey um, to, you know, have for morning tea today. So we're going to make a chocolate one. What you will need is butter. That's back to front, but it says butter. You will also need flour, milk, vanilla. Now I don't have any vanilla and unfortunately during these times, I can't just go grab some vanilla from the supermarket. So I'm going to be admitting vanilla from my recipes, but if you have it, definitely use it. You will also need some cocoa, you will need some baking powder, uh, sugar, and then any mixings that you want to include. So that might be chopped chips, it might be something like raspberries, you might want to put a dollop of Nutella or peanut butter in there. I'm using this Dutch cookie spread and I'm going to put a dollop in that before I cook it and I'll show you how that works um, as we go along. All right, let's get started on our chocolate mug cake. So first of all, you wanna grab your mug. Um, I recommend using a mug that is going to be uh, microwave safe. And usually you can check the bottom of the mug just to make sure that that is the case. So we are going to put in a tablespoon of butter first. So I'm using just my regular table 
tablespoon. Um, and I'm kind of guesstimating that that is about a tablespoon of butter. So put that into your mug. Right. And then we are going to melt that in the microwave. So um, butter can splat everywhere in your microwave if you heat it up for too long. So I recommend um, doing it for maybe like 15 or 20 seconds, depending on how high your, um, your microwave is set to. Um, and then giving it a little stir and then putting it in um, for another um, 10 seconds or so if you need to. So I'm gonna start with uh, 15 seconds and melt the butter. So we're melting the butter first so that it's nice and liquidy and it's going to help combine all our other ingredients um, into like a batter. So that's all done. See in there, it's not quite melted, but also the warm butter from the rest um, from the melted butter is going to help melt that little bit that's left over and become like a nice melted consistency. And if you have a few soft lumps in there, that's fine. Um, that'll be okay. You don't need to put it in for any longer. So if you can see there, you can't really see very well, but most of mine's melted. So I'm going to continue. So to that, you are going to add three tablespoons of milk. Now I have my milk in a cute little jug just because I don't have room on my bench for my big three litre milk carton. Um, but this is not necessary. So three tablespoons of milk into, actually I'm gonna use the butter spoon for this. So three tablespoons of milk into your mug. Three. Awesome. Give that a mix. And then you are going to add your vanilla. If you're adding vanilla now, and that's half a teaspoon. As I said, I don't have any, so I'm gonna omit it from my recipe. Um, but if you do have it, definitely use it. Then you're going to add two tablespoons of sugar. I'm just using caster sugar, but you can use brown sugar if you want. Um, so add two tablespoons of sugar. Now I didn't use this for my um, milk just before because I wanted to keep it dry for my dry ingredients. Um, and if I got it wet, it would stick. But if you are using the same spoon, that's not a problem either. Okay. So I've given a good mix. Now I'm going to add my flour. So I have my flour in a big jar like this. I'm using plain flour, but you could use gluten-free flour if you want. Um, you just wanna make sure that it is a one-to-one -one ratio um, gluten-free flour. You could also use oat flour. You could use spelt flour. You could use wholemeal flour. So I'm adding four tablespoons to my mug. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Then I'm going to add two tablespoons of cocoa. This is going to give it that yummy, rich, chocolatey flavour that most people are going to love. There is some people out there that doesn't like that don't like chocolate. Each their own, but that's not me. Alright, so once you have that all in there, we also need to add 
some baking powder. So this is going to ensure that we get a good rise on our mug cake. So that is half a teaspoon of baking powder. That just goes into the mug. Now at this point, you want to give it a good mix. And it should be like a really good batter consistency. Oh yeah, it's looking good. Make sure it's all combined. And you're getting your spoon right into the edges of your mug so that there is no area of your mug left unturned. Excellent. All right. So I'm just going to use one of the other spoons to scrape off the excess batter. And I'm just going to place that spoon to one side. So it should look something like that. Okay, so if you're adding chop chips or some raspberries or anything like that, you could even add marshmallows or nuts. Um, add those in now and give them a good, give it a good mix. If you're gonna add Nutella or uh, peanut butter or like me, some cookie, Dutch cookie spread, this is when it gets a bit fun and you can add that in now too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get about that much teaspoon and I'm going to like kind of bury it in the center of my mug cake. So pop it in like so and just kind of cover it up a little bit so that when you take a spoonful of your mug cake, it's like a really fun surprise in there because it'll be all gooey and melted and super delicious. Okay those to the same. So now we're going to put our batter into the microwave. Now everyone's microwave is different. So this is what works for my microwave, but just be mindful if you have a really powerful microwave, you might need to um, adjust the settings a little bit or put it in for a little bit less time. So uh, I find it best to put it in for like short bursts to make sure that you don't overcook it. Because if you overcook your mug cake, it will be rubbery and a little bit like a hockey puck and we don't want that. So I'm going to go for 20 seconds first and then I'm going to put it in, depending on how it looks, I'm going to put it in for either 15 to 10 second intervals after that. So let's go for our first 20 seconds. So while we're waiting, if you have any questions, don't forget to pop them in the comments. Nothing's coming up just yet, so I don't know if you're too busy making um, your mug cakes or if the comments aren't coming up, but I will definitely be jumping online afterwards to make sure that I answer any questions that there might be. Okay, let's check it. So the sides are starting to cook a little bit, so I'm going to put it in for another 15 seconds and then see how it looks after that. So if your cup, um, if your mug, sorry, is a bit hot, make sure you're using a tea towel to get it out. I don't want anyone to burn themselves. And you know, with um, certain cups, if they if they aren't completely microwave safe, they can get a little bit hot. So just be careful. Okay, as you can see, it's starting to cook. Um, the center will look raw um, because we have added in that um, cookie spread, but um, it is cooked underneath. So I'm just gonna have a little look at mine. I think mine's are pretty much about done. It's going to look like different to like a regular cake, obviously, because we've cooked it in the microwave and not the oven. So if you get like a spoon and you just start to pull back the, the edges, like the top layer, it should look like a really soft, moist cake consistency. I don't know if you can see that bit there but that's what mine looks like so that one's pretty much done so um, 
That's the chocolate mug cake. Now you can add to the top some ice cream or some cream to make it extra indulgent. Or if you want, you can add some more spread like Nutella or peanut butter or your um, cookie spread if you have some. Um, you can add some chopped fruit if you want. Really, you can, the, the options are endless and you can do whatever um, works for you. Alrighty, so if this is the only one that you're making, enjoy. If you're making some of the other mug cakes, let's move on. I'll just pop that one to the side. I'm gonna enjoy that one a little bit later. Alrighty. So next up, we are going to be making a choc chip cookie, mug cake, but it's really a choc chip cookie in a mug. So I have my next mug, and if you can see, this one has a cow on it because cows are my favorite animal. I just think they're so cute and they have beautiful long lashes. Okay, so what you wanna do, we're starting the same. We're going to melt a tablespoon of butter in our mug in the microwave. So you need to get your butter and you need to add one tablespoon into the mug. So I'm just kind of guesstimating, but I'm going to say that's about a tablespoon. You get your mixing spoon, pop it in. And I found 15 seconds was enough time, so I'm going to put it back into the microwave for 15 seconds. While we wait, why don't you tell me what your favorite animals are? Um, I have three favorite animals. Cows, otters, and dogs. Um, when I was traveling once in, in the US, I was staying in this um, small town on the, the Big Sur, which is like a coastal road, kind of like the Great Ocean Road, um, but in America. And I remember seeing these things in the, in the ocean and I was like, I didn't know what they were. I was like, what are they? They kind of look like seals, but they weren't. And they were like little baby ones and they were playing and it was so cute. And I asked someone, I was like, what, what is that? And they're like, it's an otter. And I was like, oh. and then since then I've been obsessed and I love otters. I like to call them the puppies of the ocean. So I'm going to give it a quick mix to make sure all those softer bits are uh, melted and it's looking pretty good to me. So now we are going to add our ingredients. Two tablespoons of sugar. Now I've got a little bit of cross contamination here because a little bit of cocoa left on my tablespoon but I'm okay with that. If you're not okay with that, that's fine. Just get a new spoon. We're going to then add our vanilla if you have it. I don't. And we are going to give it a mix. Lovely. Okay. We are then going to add the yolk of an egg. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with how to separate a egg white from the yolk, but I'm going to show you how to do that now. It's really simple. All you have to do is crack your egg. Uh, I find cracking my egg on a flat surface gets a more um, even crack and prevents there being shell. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna crack your egg like so, and I'm just gonna lower this a little bit so you can see a bit better what I'm doing and then I am going to turn my egg so that once the pointy side is facing up and I'm going to take the top lid off and all that white's going to ooze out then I'm going to flip the yolk into the other side of the eggshell and I'm going to keep doing that and getting rid of that egg white until there is 
barely any egg white left. And you should end up with just the yolk. So add that into your mix. This is where that tea towel will come in handy because your hands may be a little bit, have a little bit of egg white on them. And you're going to give that a mix until the egg is fully combined with the sugar and the butter. Okay. Then you're going to add your flour. I've got my flour here. And you're going to add three tablespoons. to add our choc chips. I didn't have any choc chips so I just got some uh, Easter eggs that I've chopped up into little bits. You could also use a bar of chocolate, um, you could um, use like block, block chocolate, add those in, you could use dark chocolate, white chocolate, probably any top chocolate really. Now we're not going to add any baking powder to this one because we don't want it to rise like the other mug cakes because it's more of a cookie than a cake. Okay. So I'm just going to use an extra spoon to get the excess off the spoon that we were mixing with. And it should look something like that. So again, I'm going to add it to the microwave for 20 seconds. I'm going to check it and then I'm going to see how long I think it needs to go in because we don't want to overcook it. from earlier maybe you've moved on to the cookie um, mug cake but you're eating the chocolate one at the same time and if you are doing that I like to stay on so if you have a look in there it doesn't look like much is happening but um, it is definitely cooking, so I'm going to put it in for another 15 seconds and check it again. Now just remember, your cookie in a mug is not going to look the same as a cookie that you get out of the oven because it's not had that opportunity to get all crispy from, from being in the oven. It's going to taste delicious, no doubt, but just be prepared that it is going to look a little bit different. Oh, that is looking so good. So, I don't know if you can see it, but it looks pretty, pretty well done to me. Again, like get your spoon in there, pull it back a little bit, see what it looks like under that first layer. Mine's looking so delicious. All the chocolate chips are melted and it looks like, like kind of like cookie dough underneath. So yum. Alrighty. If you're making the birthday cake, uh, mug cake, then stay tuned. Um, but if you're uh, just stopping there with the cookie one and the chocolate one, then um, enjoy. But now we're going to move um, on to the birthday cake, mug cake. So I'm going to just sit to this to the side so I can eat it later and then move on to the next one. So. We will need another mug if you are joining us for this one. Uh, I have my Gina Knows Best mug. I don't know if anyone is familiar with the TV show Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but 
but it's one of my favorites um, and Gina cracks me up she's a very hilarious character so I love this mug one of my favorites uh, to get started we are going to add two tablespoons of butter into our mug so again I'm using the same spoon as I was using before I've got to find myself a spoon it's a little bit dirty but that's fine one Now, I will probably need to add the butter into the microwave for a little bit longer this time because there is a larger volume of butter in there than there was um, in our previous mugs, mug cakes. Uh, so I'm going to add it in for 25 seconds um, and see how it goes. But there's something about butter cooking that just smells so good. It's just the most delicious smelling thing in the world. And onion and garlic cooking as well. That is just oh, so good. Alright. So you can kind of hear it crackling and popping. If that's the case, then it probably needs to come out. Because your mum or partner or dad or whoever will not be very happy if there is, is butter splattered all over the inside of the microwave. So um, you don't want to leave it in there for too long. So my butter is fully melted. If you want to have a look there, can't really see it that well. but. Um, so we're going to add one tablespoon of milk. I'm just going to use the butter spoon because I don't want to wet my other spoon. So one tablespoon of milk goes in there. We are then going to add vanilla if you have vanilla. I'm really disappointed I don't have vanilla for this one because it is technically a vanilla birthday cake mug recipe. Um, but I'm sure mine will taste delicious um, anyways. So add your vanilla, add your egg yolk. So we're doing the same as we were doing before. And you're going to get a little bit of practice this, to do this and then you'll be an absolute pro at separating your egg yolk from your egg white. So breaking in half, pointing it upwards, taking the, the top bit off and then you're pouring the yolk into each side, trying to remove as much of that white as possible. You won't get rid of all of it, but that's okay. A little bit won't hurt. Okay. Don't get rid of the egg whites. You can use them to make an omelette or um, scrambled eggs with, you can just add a couple of other whole eggs into it. Um, if you have a doggo, they might like it. You can make um, meringues, you can make cookies. Um, just really just Google what to do with egg whites and there'll be heaps of different recipes and ideas on there. Okay, give it a good mix. And then you also want to add to this um, step two tablespoons of sugar. Give it a good mix again. And to that we're going to add our flour. This four tablespoons. going to add our baking soda because we're making a cake again this time and that is half a teaspoon of baking powder 
in it goes. Excellent. And we are going to also add our sprinkles. Yes. So I have a variety of pink sprinkles. So I'm going to add, I think I'm going to add these pink ones here, plain pink ones, and then also the hearts. I feel like these um, pearls will just be a little bit like too, too, like too hard on the teeth. So a tablespoon, so I'm going to add some of my hearts and then also some of just the plain pink ones into my tablespoon. them in. Fun. And give it a mix. Make sure you get right into those edges of the mug. It's like mixed thoroughly. Use a spoon to get the rest of the batter off. into the mug mug I say mug too much obviously pop it into the microwave you know the drill 20 seconds to start off with we're gonna check it and then we're gonna add it in for another 10 to 15 seconds if need be so while we're waiting um, I hope that we'll see you later on this afternoon for our storytelling workshop. Uh, Shaq, who is going to be doing the workshop, is an epic storyteller. Um, he's going to be teaching you some awesome skills on how to tell uh, a great story. I don't know about you, but sometimes I have these awesome, epic things happen to me and uh, it's led down by my ability to make it funny, interesting and exciting um, when I relay it to someone else. So if that's you and you have problems doing that, uh, why don't you come along and join us and learn how to tell an epic story. We then, once you have an epic story, you can uh, give a family member or a loved one called and tell them. It's the perfect time to be connecting with others in that type of work. So let's check our mod cake. So as expected, not ready, so I'm going to put it in for another 15. I reckon to this particular recipe, if you had some white chocolate and you added that in, that would be really awesome as well. It would be like melty and gooey and delicious. So it's risen quite a bit um, and I'm just going to get the spoon and have a little poke around um, to see whether it is fully ready or if it needs a little bit longer and I think it looks like I might put in five more seconds because it's just looking a little bit runny in places. So with mug cakes, you really need to keep an eye on them to make sure you don't overcook them. If they're still a little bit raw in places, um, that's kind of sometimes tastes really good. So you can roll with it if you want. If not, you know, just keep cooking it at like small intervals to make sure it's not overcooked. Okay, have another little poke around. And I'm thinking it needs maybe another five seconds. Sometimes with things like this, you need to just keep at it. You know, um, we'll get there eventually and make the perfect mud cake, but um, small intervals is better than just like doing like big long ones and then potentially overcooking and all your hard work goes to waste. And then we'll 
check it again and hopefully this time it's done. So, have a look there. Ooh, turn it up that way. It's looking pretty good to me. There's a little bit of um, kind of softer batter up the top, but I'm also kind of thinking that maybe with the hearts melting, that um, they are um, creating it to be like a little bit more runnier than what it usually would be. But underneath that top layer, it looks delicious and perfect. All right, so let me just pop this to the side. So there you have it. You have now learned how to create not one, not two, but three different mug cake recipes. Um, mug cakes are awesome. You can explore lots of different varieties and um, combinations of flavors like banana, carrot, caramel, red velvet um definitely jump onto google and have a look because there is a look on them because there is lots of different recipes um and inspiration that you can get my cakes are great a um, little treat to have uh, for morning tea or afternoon tea or even dessert um, they serve one person they're easy and quick to make um, and there is barely any cleanup or dishes to do apart from your spoon and your mug um, before I go, I just want to uh, quickly uh, remind you about our Walk on the Wild Side workshop happening. Oh, it's an event, sorry. Happening tomorrow here on the iHeart Dardana Facebook group. We'll be releasing a program uh, with all the details on what is happening tomorrow later on today. So definitely keep an eye out. Um, we are also releasing the schedule. Um, for next week's programs and workshops uh, later on today uh, on the iHeart Darden Up group. So definitely keep an eye out um, for that too. So that will be later on this evening. Um, I want to wish you all a very happy uh, weekend. Um, don't forget to post a picture of your monkey creations um, in the comment below. Um, I really want to see them. I want to hear if you enjoyed them or not. Um, and that is all from me today. Thanks for joining me in this um, mug cake recipe extravaganza. Um, and I will see you all again soon. Uh, bye for now. Thanks.